dear friends, and welcome to another episode of Musica Maestra, this time in Stuttgart with the Staatsorchester Stuttgart. And uh, we have a beautiful soloist, German pianist Elisabeth Braus with us, playing the Mozart Concerto K488 in A major, one of my favorite pieces. And we will be showing you a bit of the rehearsal and also uh, how we work on the piece together and a little bit about her life and her beautiful career at the age of 25. I hope you enjoy it. I haven't played this beautiful piece since yes. 20 years, almost. You were born in 95, no? Exactly. So I'm 15 years older than you. I played it when I was 20, yeah, maybe 25, 23, 25. And, uh, and it's my favorite Mozart concerto. So I'm, Mine too. Uh, yes? Yeah. Tell me, tell me about how, how was your first encounter with the piece? I had the opportunity to record it for, for a radio project and this was actually my first time learning it. It was three years ago, I think, or two years ago. And before that, I just, um, I heard a lot of recordings and I always dreamed about the second movement because for me, this is one of the most beautiful Mozart moments somehow. Yes. And also some themes in the first and the third uh, movement. For me, this is so, so much my Mozart somehow. Yeah. Um, so I'm so happy we can play it now. But I will no, do my best. Sure. I will do my best. What do you feel about this music? What do you imagine? Is there, do you usually have a picture or characters or do you just think phrases musically? How do you work? Somehow, for me, all inspiration comes from the music, through the music, for the music somehow. And I never imagine a certain person or a place or colors. I, I try to get lost, obviously, in the moment. The intuition is more, not so much about creating something randomly in the moment, but more about picking the right option in the right moment somehow. So do you surprise yourself sometimes in concerts with what happens? Or is it always something that you already knew was going to happen? I always know in a certain bar. Let's say I will, would like to build up the, the intensity somehow. But on stage it can mean so many different things. Then it can be maybe hopeful and on another day it's... Um, almost maniac, I don't know, or um, on other days maybe it's even hopeless or something. Musical phrasing is, has something to do with nature as well and, mm -hmm. and, and should be logical in a way um, that also comes from the music and from the, from the text. And I try not to get too lost in my own feelings, so I, like, I try to be um, prepared and, and know about the different um, possibilities to, to play a certain place.
started very young at four, I heard. Yes, around four. Uh, because your parents are musicians. Tell me about yes. your parents. Both my parents are professional musicians. My mom is a viola player and my father is a conductor. Um, obviously, he also played a lot of, a lot of piano at home. And that's why I started. I had no choice. <laughs> and um, for me... So was it something that they wanted you to do very oh, much? No. With, no. All the things that are essential to me or that became essential to me as an, as an artist and also as a human were so natural at home. Mm -hmm. And um, there is no day where we don't talk about music or, or mm -hmm. art or literature at dinner or lunch and everyone in the family gets involved. I think this helped me so much to be able to develop an, an own perception of, of art, you know, sense of art, idea of, of music, life in general, and I could not be more thankful. Shall we play again? Just to see if it happens. <laughs> because you know what's amazing, I feel, is that it's like speaking a language, basically. Yep. We can talk all we want, but there's only so much we can do with words. But when we play, there's, I feel there's an, a new connection, no? Exactly. It's like we're, we're, we're talking, we're, be, we're being together, but in another dimension. Yep. And that's what I love about music, about playing, about conducting. And actually, um, this, this piece, when I was your age, uh, I conducted and played. It was the only thing that I've ever conducted and played. Then I decided it was better to do one or the other, but better. <laughs> Are you ever uh, desiring to conduct? Never, ever. I'm, I'm so, <laughs> so untalented and also I have such a high respect really um, for conducting and playing the piano. I mean, both at the same time, I don't know how to do it. And also for conducting in general, it's really such a mystery to me. And I'm <laughs> so <laughs> grateful for, for fantastic con conductors. Oh, okay, <laughs> let, thank you. Let's, have a, let's see. Take two. Do you use the left pedal when you do that or not really? It's tricky. It no? depends on the on the piano and also for example this time I use it a little more than I should because on I know we're playing yes, because ah. I know we're playing for more for microphones than for mm. the audience, of course, and with a great hall you should always try to avoid the, the left pedal as a, as a general color, I think, as a special color mm. in certain places, yeah. But uh, sometimes when it's you hard. make one yeah, and when you want to make something especially beautiful, then I always, I, I, I yeah. You put it there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You helped me transport myself back to when I was your age, and it's so special. Thank you very much. <laughs>